So our first talk of the day will be from Melissa Wilson, who's been a PA, uh, now lead PA in the Melanoma Center for many years and is known to almost everyone at AIM because she is the resource person whom all of you uh, who inquire about uh, melanoma and therapeutic questions and other items will reach at the AIM, at the AIM um, uh, website. So Melissa, we'll talk about adjuvant options for stage three melanoma. This is an area where we're still talking about what patients should be treated, what patients uh, perhaps may not need to be treated. Melissa, welcome. Hi. <laughs> so of all the people that you're gonna hear talk today, I will be definitely the most informal. So, um, we chose this topic basically because it's super relevant. What our goal is, is to prevent you from developing stage four melanoma, because with all the amazing research that we have, um, if we can prevent melanoma from metastasizing in the first place, that's the ultimate goal. So you'll hear later today, one of our other speakers talk about adjuvant treatment in stage two B and C, um, which is really the newest avenue of where um, adjuvant therapy has been, you know, focused um, for the last couple of years. But that doesn't mean that stage three melanoma really loses its flavor. So we'll talk about that today. So first, what is stage three melanoma? What this basically means is that the melanoma has spread from where the primary is regionally. So it's away from your primary, but it's not distantly metastatic, like in the lungs or in the liver, things like that. This is really lymph node involvement in transit metastases, and then the presence of satellites or microsatellites within the primary. So just to tell you a little bit about what in transit metastasis means, it means that there's a focus of melanoma that's greater than two centimeters from the primary, but still not in the regional lymph node basin. So for example, if I had a melanoma on my arm, um, an in transit metastasis would be somewhere between where it started and your axilla, which is your armpit. Um, different opposing to that is a satellite um, metastasis, which is less than two centimeters from your primary. So again, to use the same example, if I had a melanoma on my forearm, it would be somewhere within two centimeters of that primary. So that, that's the group that's considered stage three. So why do I need adjuvant treatment? So in both the AJCC eighth and seventh edition, you can see in terms of um, reoccurrence rates, patients with stage three disease have the highest rates of reoccurrence outside of you know, stage one, two, and, and three. Um, what our goal is, is to prevent reoccurrence. That's the number one goal of adjuvant therapy. Um, and so it comes and it happens after surgery. Um, later on today, we'll talk about neoadjuvant therapy and, and the utilization of that. Um, as Dr. Kirkwood said, both immunotherapy or sometimes it's called IO therapy and targeted therapy can reduce the risk of melanoma recurrence by more than 50%. So that's huge compared to what we had when I first started um, in 2005. Um, also, these treatments are very well tolerated now. So we have a, a plethora of options um, in terms of treatment. So what are they? Um, in the terms of immunotherapy, um, we have interferon alpha, which has been the standard, you know, since the 80s. Dr. Kirkwood pioneered that research. Um, again, that, as he said, that treatment is extremely toxic. There's a lot of therapy that needs to be given. Um, and so we've moved away from that with the newer agents. Um, the second drug um, that really was approved for adjuvant therapy is anti-CTLA-4, which is called IPI. Um, or Yervoy, essentially this drug helps take the breaks off the immune system. We'll talk about that in a slide or two next. Um, the unfortunate thing about this is that it does have a lot of toxicity. So these patients develop a lot of autoimmune toxicities that can sometimes be pretty severe. So the second generation of checkpoint inhibitors are the drugs called anti-PD-1 agents, and that's nivolumab and pembrolizumab. And then you have targeted therapy, which are the BRAF inhibitors, which are dibrafenib and trametinib in this stage three setting. I don't want to spend a ton of time on these, but I did want to mention them because this data has been extremely um, beneficial to our um, goal of prevention. Um, for this is an example, I have three slides for the drugs, but um, for Keytruda, um, this Kaplan-Meier estimate for relapse-free survival, so that means that your melanoma has not reoccurred. Um, and they looked at it in a three-year analysis in this study, Keynote 054, and they saw that at one year, 75% of people that received therapy did not have a reoccurrence. At two years, 68% did not have a reoccurrence. And at 36 months, 
there were still 64% of patients that were treated that did not reoccur. So you can see that it's a very durable response. The same thing for um, Opdivo. Now this curve is a little bit um, tricky, but the information is helpful both for your VOI and Opdivo. This is looking at five-year relapse-free survival in Checkmate 238. And you can see that at a year, it's 70% for Opdivo, um, 61% for your VOI. Um, at 36 months, it's 58%. Um, 48 months, 52%, and then at 60 months or five years, it's still 50% of people are without reoccurrence. So these, these drugs are great. Um, and then the same thing for the dibrafenib trimatinib at five years. Um, at the four-year mark, you can see that 55% of patients still are without reoccurrence, and at five-year um, mark, 52%. So again, um, these agents are not only effective in the most highest risk, which is in the first two years, but also um, extend their durability two years after. So just a little slide about checkpoint inhibition. So this is immunotherapy. Um, in particular, the rest of my talk is gonna be focused really on PD-1 um, and the targeted therapy agents. So essentially the immune system, <laughs> its job is to get rid of cancer cells, right? So. Um, tumor, unfortunately, are very smart and they know how to evade the immune system. So they do that through a couple of different mechanisms. I could spend a whole nother lecture talking about that. But essentially, in this particular slide, what we're looking at is anti-PD-1 or the anti-PD-1 drugs will help block this interaction between the tumor and the T cells that tell it to hide or that it's okay, that it doesn't exist. And so um, anti-PD-1 actually just unmasks the tumor to the immune system so that it knows that it can be marked for death. That's as basic as I can describe it. And CTLA-4, anti-CTLA-4, its job is sort of similar in that it will block the tumor from preventing the T cell from continuing to interact and make T cells. So it's like taking the brakes off the immune system and you just keep making T cells to the tumor. So how do we give anti-PD-1? It's roughly about once a month. Pembrolizumab can be given every six weeks or it can be given every three weeks. Nivolumab is typically given every four weeks, but also can be given every two weeks. Um, it's the shorter duration, the three weeks and two weeks are just a lower dose. Um, there were studies that showed that there's really no difference between those two groups in terms of toxicity. Um, IV administration for the anti-PD-1 drugs, it takes about 30 minutes to infuse and you do the adjuvant therapy for one year. I put side effects in um, quotations here because there really aren't side effects of the drug, but there can be autoimmune things that can happen. Those are called immune-related adverse events. Really, this can happen in any cell in the body, but the most common ones are dermatitis, which is rash, colitis, which manifests as diarrhea, Pneumonitis, which actually has symptoms very similar to COVID except for fever. So shortness of breath, cough, reduction in O2 sats. You can get hepatitis where the immune system attacks your liver, which causes your liver functions to go up. Um, the endocrinopathies, which are actually pretty more common than we originally thought um, with thyroid, um, either hyper or hypothyroid or um, dysfunction of the adrenal glands. And then there, and one of the things that unfortunately is really difficult to treat is fatigue. This population of patients, um, if it's not attributable to something else, specifically an endocrinopathy or other, other underlying um, itis, um, fatigue can be really limiting for some patients. Um, and then there's another other accountable thing that's like 2% or less side effects, but again, it can happen in any system of the body. You can get inflammation of your eye, your eye muscles. You can get inflammation of your tear ducts. You can get inflammation of your joints. So there's lots of other things that, that can happen. But these also happen in less than a third of patients. So how do we manage these side effects or IRAEs? Um, it's really steroids. In most cases, it's one milligram per kilogram per day. Um, the steroid taper can be a little arduous. So we try to do a long and slow taper because we want to only do steroids once. We don't want to go up and down on your steroid dose. So that usually lasts about four to six weeks. Um, most of the time patients will discontinue treatment after one of these IRAEs that requires steroids. Okay, so then there's the BRAF MEK inhibition or targeted therapy. So the normal pathway of BRAF MEK and, and RAS ERK is to cause the cell to grow. So patients that have the BRAF mutation, which the most common one is V600E, 
um, it tells this cell pathway to happen more frequently. So these tumors tend to grow really quickly. Um, so blocking this pathway inhibits essentially the growth and development of, of the cells of melanoma. How do we give targeted therapy? So unlike um, immunotherapy, targeted therapy is actually given orally. You have to take it every day. You have dibrafenib, which is 75 milligrams times two. So 150 milligrams twice a day and trametinib, which is two, two milligrams once a day. Um, one, some of the caveats, you have to have an echocardiogram and EKG because the MEK inhibitor part of this treatment can actually sometimes affect the cardiac function. Um, you have to take it on an empty stomach. So that means that you have to take it one other hour before you eat or two hours after you eat. Again, the duration of treatment is 12 months. Some of the more common side effects of targeted therapy um, are fatigue, rash. Um, the rash actually kind of gets split into two different rashes. So sometimes the rash looks more like hives and that's from the BRAF inhibitor. And sometimes it looks more like acne and that's from the MEK inhibitor. Um, you can have headaches, diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting, joint pain, blurred vision. These are just the common ones. Um, the one that I didn't list, and I can't believe I didn't list it because it's the hardest one to, to kind of manage is fever. So um, drug company actually came out with a really good management guide for fever. So if you need that, you can contact me after. I'm happy to share that with you. But um, what the goal is really is to keep patients on the highest doses of these medications. So managing these side effects, even though they're very mild, it's very important that we do this well so that we can keep you know, patients on the higher doses. Now you are able to dose reduce these medications if the side effects are, you know, too severe. Um, again, I stated most of these side effects are mild, but some can be severe. You typically will hold drug until it resolves. Um, even though the half-life of these medications are really short, um, sometimes the effects can last, you know, a week or two before you start to really feel better. And again, if you have any of these side effects, you can continue at a, at a smaller dose. So in summary, adjuvant therapy is extremely important um, because it does help prevent reoccurrence. There are so many drugs now that are great in metastatic disease, but really this is the root of trying to prevent disease from spreading. Um, really, everyone always asks, like, what treatment should I do? It's really the one that's best for you. You have to look at things like your lifestyle and whether or not you're needle phobic, like there's lots of things that you need to take into consideration. The most important adjuvant therapy is the one that you do. So um, this slide is just kind of a comparison between immunotherapy and targeted therapy. Um, again, you know, immunotherapy is IV, targeted therapy is oral. They both have the same duration of treatment. With immunotherapy, there's not immediate side effects, but immune-mediated adverse events can occur and you need steroids to manage them. Whereas side effects with targeted therapy, most of them are mild. Um, they're managed with dose reductions um, and you can continue therapy if you have any of them. Um, with immunotherapy, there really aren't medication interactions. Targeted therapy, there are some, um, but they're really well, well tolerated. So those are my references and that's it. Have any other questions? I'm happy to answer them.